Did you know that the Dollar Tree has so many different supplies and items that you can use for crafting your own planters? Yep, DIY planters are easy with different items that you can buy at the Dollar Tree. And today I'm going to share with you 25 different planter ideas that you can make using things that I found at the Dollar Tree. It all just goes away and things I plan to say, oh baby. These are so easy. You need a couple of things. This is a, I don't know what it is. It holds water or something, but it's a vase I got from the Dollar Tree along with some stickers. And the first thing I did was remove the sticker from the bottom of the vase because let's face it, we don't wanna have any stickers or anything on the vase. We want this to look perfect and beautiful. And then I found these stickers at the Dollar Tree and they're kind of raised. So they're circular and they're raised up a little bit and I thought they would work pretty well for this vase. So basically I'm gonna take these little stickers and just randomly place them all over the vase just like that. And there was no pattern or anything like that that I followed when I was attaching the stickers. I just put them on randomly because I want them all over the vase. And this sticker pack has 117 stickers and I bought two of them because I wasn't sure how many stickers it would take to cover a vase like this. But in the end, I only ended up using about one half of one package of the stickers for this vase. And that is what it looks like when it is all done. But then I found these other stickers and I bought this little vase, bowl something out of glass. And I really wanted to try out these stickers because they're raised up even more. So let's go ahead and put these on the glass and see what kind of vase we end up with. Now these stickers are basically attached together. And I picked off each of the little raised circles and just attached it to the glass. I didn't use anything extra, no E6000, no hot glue gunning, nope. I just took the stickers and attached them all over again in a random pattern on the vase. And I think you can see these stickers are raised up even a little bit more than the first vase that I did. So next I took my vases outside and spray painted them. And the spray paint I'm using, of course, is Rust-Oleum because I love Rust-Oleum, but this is a semi-gloss finish. So it's not quite as shiny of a finish as you would get from a typical spray paint. I really wanted more of a matte, but I wanted a little bit of a shine. So I decided to go with a semi-gloss. And I did do several coats of the spray paint because I want to make sure to cover up all the little holes of where the stickers are placed. And I think it worked pretty well. Again, a very simple project. I was able to do this in just a couple of hours. And then all I had to do was find some flowers to fill the vases. So I found some lilacs and I found a pink bunch of flowers from Walmart. So for the taller vase, I do want to use the lilacs because I saw them and I was like, oh, that would be so pretty in there. So I got these lilacs at the Dollar Tree. I think I bought five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. So all I had to do was remove the tags and then they were ready to be used. You can't get much easier than that, right? And then I just spread out the flowers a little bit and put them into the vase. So for this one, I just found this bunch of flowers at Walmart and it worked really well with my trusty Husky snipping tools. Those things are awesome but I just clipped off all of the individual flower stems. Some of them I kept the leaves and some of them I took the leaves off.
and it was such a pretty arrangement like it was I thought that would be perfect for this little fishbowl vase round vase I don't know whatever you want to call it but I did take all of the flowers that were in that bouquet and I put them all into this vase There we go, a beautiful little very spring and happy bouquet. So these are my floral arrangements that I did. They are so pretty and it just makes me really excited for spring. I really love how the vases turned out. So pretty, so easy, and I don't really think they look like they came from the Dollar Tree. What do you think? All right, so I found this tray at the Dollar Tree. Now they do have some of these trays that have like a raised embellishment around the outer edge of it, but I chose a plain one. And I thought it would be really pretty to have this tray be white. So I'm using some folk art chalk paint and I'm basically just going to paint the entire tray with the chalk paint. But again, if you wanted a different color, you do you and do whatever color you feel would look good for your decor. But for mine, I decided to go white. And I'm using a chiseled edge chalk paint brush and it seems to work really well to get down into those corners and all of the little nooks and crannies of this tray. And I don't know why I decided to paint the inside first, but then I decided I better paint the bottom because the bottom is going to be showing as well and I wanted to make sure that the top and the bottom were the same. But I think if I were to do this again, I would probably start with the bottom side first. And once my tray was dry, then I took a little bit of dark wax and just kind of added that to the tray itself on both the top and the bottom. And I decided to play it smart and do the bottom side first, which is what I should have done when I was painting it. And then I wanted to have something to put onto my tray. So I found these little succulents. Some of them came from the Dollar Tree and some of them came from Michael's when they were 40% off. So they are $1.99 at Michael's, but being 40% off, they ended up being like $1.20. So they were actually cheaper than getting them at the Dollar Tree. And I wanted them to have a similar appearance on the bottom portion or the planter part. So I just took some jute twine and secured it with hot glue around the bottom of each of the succulents. So this way all of the planters will look somewhat similar. So even though some are square and some are round, they will all have the same base. And that is looking very cute. So once I had my first little pot done, then I just had to duplicate the process on the remaining pots. And the last turn of jute is applied and now all of my little succulents have matching jute pots.
and for my tray, I wanted it to have handles. So I took some beads and using a Dollar Tree skewer and a little piece of floral foam, then I put the beads on and then painted them with the same white chalk paint that I used for the tray itself. Now I found that by painting beads like this, it's a lot easier than trying to do it piece by piece. And once the chalk paint was dry, then I added a little bit of wax, hoping to make it match the tray, and then allowed them to dry. And then using some jute twine again, I took seven beads and put them onto a strand of the twine and then tied knots on the end to help keep the beads all in one place. And there is one of the handles for my tray. And all I had to do then was attach it to the tray. And I wasn't sure if the hot glue was going to hold because of the tray being plastic, but actually I think because of the chalk paint, it actually worked really well. I don't think I would be carrying this tray by those little handles, but for a decorator piece, it works perfect. And there is my rustic farmhouse style tray. And then I found these rocks at the Dollar Tree as well. And I got a couple of bags because I wasn't sure how many bags I would need, but one bag of these rocks worked perfect and it filled a tray. And then all I had to do was put my adorable little succulents onto the tray. And here it is, the finished piece. This is my adorable little farmhouse rustic tray with succulents. Isn't that adorable? This was a really affordable project that was easy to make. I did it in a couple of hours and I think it's a really great accent on our table. So you are gonna be so amazed at how easy this project is. I found this love sign at the Dollar Tree and because right now it's Valentine's time or you know, getting ready to decorate for Valentine's Day. So they have lots of different framed prints like this. And I really like the size, but I didn't really want to leave that love on there. So using a tool, I scraped off the love and most of it came off, but I did have a few little remnants left. So I just kind of used this little tool and just kind of chiseled away at the glue that was still on there. It doesn't have to be perfectly removed, but the more you can get off of it, the easier it'll make this project. So I got rid of as much glue as I could and then just wiped away those little dust particles. And then I picked out some paints that I wanted to make this tray because this is gonna be a tray now, it's not going to be a sign. So I used different shades of brown and of course burnt umber because burnt umber goes with everything when it comes to painting farmhouse style decor. And I have to tell you, if you get a sign like this, be prepared for several coats of paint. As you can see along the top edge, the paint wasn't really sticking very well. So what I did was paint this almost an ivory cream color all over it and then added a little bit of a darker brown. It's kind of a mocha color. And I applied the paint pretty much evenly and then I set it aside to let that first coat dry. 
And while that was drying, I took some of these wooden beads and I just painted them as well. So I started off with that cream color and then I added in a little bit of the brown and then eventually some burnt umber. Now I think you can see my contraption for being able to paint the beads without getting paint all over my fingers. It's pretty easy. I just took a wooden skewer and skewered that into a piece of floral foam and then I just painted the beads. And just like the tray, I painted the beads and then I allowed them to dry. And after the first coat of paint had dried on my frame or my tray as it is now, I did add another couple of layers of different colors of paint that were similar. So the cream color, the medium brown, and then of course the burnt umber. And I even added in a little bit of white. I like layering the paints like this while it's wet because it gives a little bit of depth and it just looks really nice, I think. So I just made my way around the outside of the frame with my layering paint technique. And then I did the same thing to the top edge of the tray. And then I went around the inside edge of the tray and then added some more paint to the bottom. And I think you can tell, you can't really see those little remnants of the love that was left on from that glue. And there is no right or wrong way to do this. As you can see, I'm just putting on a little bit more burnt umber, and then I'm just gonna kind of blend everything in, and that will give yet another layer of depth or dimension to my project. And while that was drying, I did another layer of paint on the beads. Now these beads are actually going to be the feet of the tray. So they don't necessarily have to be perfect. In fact, I find if I'm not trying to be perfect, I actually like them better. All right, so here is my tray. It is pretty much dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the feet to the bottom. So I just take a bead and put some glue around the edge and then just put it on the corner of the tray. And here is the tray all done. And then I had this greenery from Hobby Lobby. As you can see, I've already taken a couple of stems off, but I'm just gonna cut two stems because this is gonna be some decoration for the tray. And this greenery was $7.99, but it was on sale for half off. So now I'm just kind of playing around and figuring out how am I going to put these. And then on a thrift store excursion, I found this. It was the vase and it even included these little balls. So not necessarily a dollar, but it was $1.99 for both pieces. So now I'm just kind of putting these little balls and just moving them around to play around and get my decor how I want it to be. Isn't this adorable? This was so easy and it fills this space nicely and it looks really cool, I think. What do you think? And I like this project so much that I had to make another one because it was so easy. And I also made a gray farmhouse style tray to go on our coffee table in our living room. This is so pretty and it's so easy and it doesn't really look too much like the Dollar Tree, does it? Okay, so this is what you're gonna need. You need three of these little trays from the Dollar Tree. And yeah, they're $1.25, but you know what? It's worth it. All right, so here are my three little wooden trays and I got them with the stars on the end, but it doesn't really matter. They have stars, hearts, but whatever the design, it doesn't really matter because you're not really gonna see them. So first I'm gonna connect these little trays together and I'm gonna do two, just like that. And then I'm going to connect the third one to the other end, just like that. And this is gonna be the base of the centerpiece. Now, one extra thing that I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm adding some glue to the seams between each of the boxes. And I like this because then it makes it more like it's one solid piece and not three pieces of something put together. So 
I did it on one side and then I flipped it over and did the same thing on the other side. So I just used some hot glue and then this little tool which fills in that gap. Just like that. And you can do the bottom if you want, but no one's really gonna see that, so it's not really necessary. And the next part, pretty easy. We are just going to paint these boxes. Now, these boxes are going to be the tray or the base for our centerpiece. And I'm using burnt umber. I love burnt umber. It kind of goes with everything. And I'm just painting one side and basically doing the outside of the boxes first. And I'm just taking a little bit of time and making sure that all of the sides that could potentially be visible are covered with the paint. And again, this is just burnt umber. I'm not gonna add any other colors quite yet. All right, now once my box is all painted, I'm gonna go ahead and coat it one more time with the burnt umber. And with the second coat of the paint, you can see that those seams that I covered up, they're not near as visible as they were. So one good coat of burnt umber, and I want this kind of thick because this is where I'm going to start adding in some different paint colors. So I find that it works best for me if the paint is pretty thick and it's got a good base that we can blend all of the colors together. So then I'm just using a tan, I think that's a mocha, and then a cream color. So again, just making sure I have a nice thick coat of that burnt umber paint on the sides. And now here's where we're gonna add some dimension. So I'm just adding in that tan mocha color and just basically putting some straight lines and then I'm adding in the cream and then just blending everything together. This gives a little bit more depth and dimension to the paint job, I think. And once I did the sides, then I did the inside of each of the boxes. And you probably don't have to do the bottom, but it's better to not take a chance and just paint everything so that just in case something does show, you won't see any of that bare wood. All right, the paint job is done. So now I'm using some Dollar Tree floral foam and I'm just gonna position these in the middle of each of the boxes and secure them with some hot glue. And these are some really pretty magnolia flowers that I found at Walmart and they were $3.62 per bunch. And I ended up using three bunches of flowers. And first I removed the magnolia heads and then I also removed the leaves because I'm going to be using all of the leaves and all of the flowers for this centerpiece. And then I just started putting in the leaves and I started with the corners and then just worked my way around the centerpiece so that there's a lot of greenery around the edges. And once I had the greenery done, now it was time to put in the flowers. So one bunch of the flowers, I removed the heads and I just secured them with some hot glue into the floral foam. And I ended up using two flower heads on each piece of the foam. And then on another bunch of the flowers, I cut some of them off because I want them to be a little bit taller and I just stuck them down into the foam. And 
and that is pretty much it. And here is our centerpiece, all complete and finished on our dining room table. Now, if you wanted to, you could probably put some beads on the bottom to raise it up, but I kind of like it just like this. What do you think? All right, for this next technique, we're going to be using Epsom salt and chalk paint. So I'm going to put some silver gray chalk paint into a container along with a couple of spoonfuls of Epsom salt. Then I'm just gonna blend it together. It is a little bit thick. So I am going to add a little bit of water to my mixture. I've never used Epsom salt for painting or adding texture to any of my projects, so this one was completely new to me. And I have this cute little plastic container, I think it's a dessert cup that I got from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to paint that with my Epsom salt chalk paint mixture. Now the Epsom salt, it does definitely give it some texture but it also kind of flakes off. So if you're going to be doing something like this, I would probably recommend using a sealer or Mod Podge so that you don't end up with little pieces of Epsom salt all over and off of your vase. But the chalk paint works really well to coat the plastic, even with just one coat of paint. And that is all I did on this little vase was just one coat of paint. And then I did come back with a little bit of some kind of a cream colored chalk paint. And I just dry brushed a little bit because I couldn't really see the Epsom salt pieces and I want to be able to see the texture. So I just used this cream colored chalk paint and lightly brushed it all over the dessert cup or what is now a little vase. This really makes it so you can see the texture of the project. And then I did use that cream colored chalk paint to paint the inside of the dessert cup as well. Just in case you could see it, I didn't want it to look just like clear plastic. And here is the finished project. I do like that. I think it turned out really cute. I do wish it had a little bit more texture from the Epsom salt, but lesson learned, I think it looks cute. All right, so for this project, I'm going to be using latex caulking. So this is latex painter's caulk, which is paintable. And I got this container from the Dollar Tree and it's pretty flimsy. It's a plastic container that they had at Halloween time. So I'm just going to take the caulking and I'm going to put that all around the outside of this container. Now this type of painting does get really messy. So I would encourage you to wear some sort of gloves over your hands. And once I had the caulking all onto the container, then I just used my hands and smoothed it all out. And honestly, this would look kind of cool if you left it like this and then just painted it afterwards. That would actually look pretty nice too, I think. But I decided I wanted to give it some texture with coffee. <laughs> I know this is silly, but I took coffee not used coffee, this is new coffee, and I put it onto the caulking while the caulking was wet, and then I just kind of smushed and patted the coffee into the caulking. Now, funny fact, this planter that I'm making, it still smells like coffee. And I just worked my way all around the container, patting the coffee, into the caulking. And you can see it is kind of turning it a coffee or a tannish color.
Now, after I had let that completely dry, this is what it looked like. So I decided to take some chalk paint and see if I could make it look like, you know, one of those pottery barn vessels because those look so nice. And that is basically my result that I'm trying to get with a lot of these projects. So I'm just adding in some of the chalk paint all over my container. Between the caulking and the coffee, you can definitely see the texture of this container. I really like that. And I had a little bit left, so I did go ahead and paint the bottom of the inside of the container as well. Now I did want to add a little bit of something extra, so I took a wet paper towel and the Dollar Tree brown oxide paint, and I just kind of dabbed that onto the container. And once I was done with my painting and it was dry, I did coat it with a thick coat of Mod Podge. And here is the finished vessel. I think it looks kind of cool. Not sure how I feel about the brown. I might have gone a little too brown for my own personal taste. All right, now for this project, I'm going to be using a Dollar Tree planter. That's what this is and the joint compound. The joint compound is actually really fun to work with and it's really affordable. You can find it at Walmart and even Home Depot. But what I'm doing is coating the entire Dollar Tree plastic vase with the joint compound. And once that was completely dry, then I just took some paints and added some different color paints to the planter. I'm starting off with a gray chalk paint first. And then I went in with some black acrylic paint. Now I didn't have any set pattern. I wanted to have a little bit of the different colors. So I wanna see the white, I wanna see the gray and the black. Then I'm going to take this extreme sheen in sterling silver. And my goal was to paint that over top of different parts of the planter to kind of incorporate everything together. You can definitely see the texture of the joint compound on this planter. And I do like the different colors too. I think it's unique and it's definitely a little bit something extra, not just a Dollar Tree planter. What do you think? All right, for this next project, I really wanted some terracotta chalk paint, but I didn't have any, so I decided to make some. And did you know that you can make chalk paint using calcium carbonate? So I'm going to take a little bit of calcium carbonate, a couple of tablespoons, and put that into a jar. And next, I'm just going to add some water. Now, I would recommend doing this step first because you don't want to have any clumps or lumps in your calcium carbonate. And that could happen if you added the paint in at the same time. So then I'm going to take the calcium carbonate liquid and put some of that into another jar. And then I'm going to add my acrylic paint. And this is just Anita's acrylic paint that I got at Hobby Lobby. So if you don't have chalk paint, you can make it. You can use a plaster to make chalk paint or if you do have powdered calcium carbonate, it works really well too. Now, the one thing that I really like about chalk paint is it adheres very well to different surfaces that you're painting. That's why chalk paint is probably one of my favorite paints to use. And once I had mixed up the paint, then I did go ahead and label it so I would know what it is. And I did label the calcium carbonate mixture as well because I can use that in the future.
And now I am ready to paint my vase, which is basically a vase that has been secured onto a Dollar Tree candlestick with E6000. So I just took my terracotta paint and using a chip paintbrush, I just kept my strokes all going in the same direction on my vase. Again, I'm using thinner coats of paint because I don't want to have any runs on my pretty vase. And once the first coat was dry, then it was time for a second coat of paint. And I think you can see that the terracotta actually does have a really chalk-like appearance to it. So the calcium carbonate works really well to add for chalk paint. And then I did my second coat of paint, but it did end up taking off a little bit of the first coat of paint. So for the third coat of paint, I did change to more of a wash style paintbrush. The bristles really give a smooth finish to this face. And I don't want this to look like a Dollar Tree vase, so I did go ahead and paint the inside as well. And this is the finished product. I think that chalk paint, that terracotta, it worked really well. I am very happy with that. And this is the entire vase finished and completed. And again, I really like the calcium carbonate for chalk paint. All right, for my next project, I have these terracotta tiles. I have so many of them, so I decided to make a vase. So I'm taking a Dollar Tree self-sticking tile and I'm going to cut pieces out that I'm going to place on top of the vase. So it's literally like I'm making tiles out of the self-stick tile. So for every side of my vase, I need to have a tile. And I just used a Sharpie to trace out the sides onto the tile. And then I did use a little bit of the Dollar Tree wood glue to secure the adhesive backing to the tile. Otherwise, it will fall apart. And next, I just applied the cutout tiles to my vase. So all four sides of the vase have a piece of that Dollar Tree tile. Now I do want to go ahead and make sure everything is blended together. So I'm using a little bit of painter's caulk and I'm going to put that on the top edge and this will make it look like it's one piece. So it's really easy just to smooth down the caulking and then allow it to dry. And once it was dry, I went back with some chalk paint. This is white chalk paint and yes, it is in a Dollar Tree container because I do like to reuse the containers, but this is chalk paint. And I just painted all four sides of the vase with this white chalk paint. Now these tiles are really fun to work with for crafting because it's easy to cut them and they have this raised pattern, which makes it really fun to get a little creative once you get it the color you want it to be. If you wanted to leave it silver, you could, but I wanted mine to look a little more farmhouse, which is why I used the white paint. And this is my planter when it is all dry. It's hard to see that raised tile pattern on there, but I am going to take care of that by applying a little bit of folk art wax. Now this is just a tiny, tiny bit just to brush over the pattern so that you can see it a little bit better. And I find that using a darker accent color works best but if you wanted to, you could reverse that and have a brown planter and white accents or any color that you really wanted.
and even the paintbrush that I'm using is from the Dollar Tree. These work really well. I do find that they don't last very long. The bristles do shed out pretty easily, but you get two in a pack for $1.25. And for a craft project like this, they do work really well. And that is my planter. I really like how you can see the tiles. And here is the planter on a shelf with some spring tulips. Super cute and super easy using stuff that I already had. For this next project, I'm going to use this sign from the Dollar Tree, come gather at our table. It's really cute and that is going to be the bottom of my project, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove that gather and it did stay in one piece, so maybe I can use that in a future project. Then I took some little wood turnings and I glued those to the bottom of the sign, or I guess the top of the sign where the lettering is, because like I said, this is going to be the bottom and these are going to be the feet for my tray. And I love making riser trays like these. They're so easy. And the Dollar Tree has so many different things that make it really easy to make trays like this. And the wood glue is so affordable. I did take that and just fill in all around the corners of the sign because I don't want it to fall down. I need to make sure it's gonna be strong enough to hold what I'm going to be putting onto my tray. And I wanted to give this tray a more springtime or summertime feel, so I painted it with terracotta paint. And I believe this is Anita's acrylic paint that I got at Hobby Lobby in the color terracotta. It did take several coats of the paint to make sure everything was covered. I didn't want any of that original sign to show through, so I just did one coat, let it dry, did another coat, and then a third coat. And this is the end result. And I have a little terracotta tray. But again, I do find that this acrylic paint does scratch easily. So I did coat it with a nice heavy coat of Mod Podge. And I find that the Mod Podge works really well for coating any project that where you could potentially have some scratching occur. It seals the project and protects it from little dings. Next, I got these at the Dollar Tree. They're a set of three for $1.25 and they are terracotta. They do have some dings in them, so they're not exactly perfect, but I spray painted them all with this white high gloss paint that I got at Home Depot. I found that the Home Depot spray paint is very affordable and a lot less expensive than most of the spray paints today. Then I just took some faux greenery and some little white flowers and put them into the terracotta pots. And I've created this adorable terracotta tray and it holds these little planters perfectly. Now for this project, we're going to make a planter and I'm going to use this metal planter that I got at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be using this spackling to cover the entire planter. The spackling is a little bit messy, so I did put on some gloves to keep my hands nice and clean. And while I'm doing this, I'm putting a pattern into the spackling onto the planter. Because when I'm making planters like this, I love texture. And the spackling compound really does give a lot of texture to a project. And while you're watching me spackle, why not hit that subscribe button, then click the bell notification. That way you'll be alerted every time I have a new video coming out. Here is the texture that I was able to create on this project just by using some spackling. Isn't that pretty?
And once the spackling was dry, I did go ahead and paint that with a soft yellow paint. And the spackling itself is not very strong. So I wanna make sure that it is going to stay in place for the next step of my project. So I did give it a coat of sealer with some Mod Podge. Mod Podge is the best sealer. It's so affordable. And once that was dry, I took some white chalk paint, but I only want the white paint to go on the raised portions of the spackling. So I'm not going to use a lot of paint. And then I'm just using a circular motion, working my way around the planter to highlight all of that texture. It also really lightens up that yellow. So it's not quite so yellow. Once the planter was dry, I had put some floral foam into the center of it and then using these pretty pinkish hydrangeas that I got at Michael's, I put them and the leaves into the planter. Michael's has the prettiest spring flowers. They are a little bit more expensive, but when you can find them on sale, these flowers are definitely something that I look forward to every spring. I love how that looks. They're so pretty. And this is a close up of the texture of the planter. I love painting like this. It really gives some dimension to a project and I think it looks great. Now for this project, I'm going to use this Dollar Tree vase or candle holder. I really like that style, but for my vase, I don't need that lip. So I'm going to secure some white cotton rope to the vase because I want it to be all the same size as I'm going to wrap this cotton rope all around the vase. So I wanted to make sure that that lip that was on this little candle holder was gone. So I filled that in first with the piece of the rope and then I secured a piece of the cotton rope to the bottom of the candle holder. Now, I don't think there's really any right or wrong way how to do this. Sometimes I start at the top, sometimes I start at the bottom. It just depends on my mood more than anything. But for this one, I did start at the top of the planter and then I worked my way around, working with small sections of the rope as I glued it onto the glass candle holder. I think the most important thing is just to go slowly until you get it finished. Don't rush the process. And once I got to the top, I did want to cover everything. So I don't want to see any of that original candle holder. So I went ahead and glued the rope to itself. So this looks like it is completely made of rope. Very cute. Then I found these Dollar Tree floral pieces and I really like them. They are so pretty and spring-like and they're really nice quality. They look like they would come from Michael's. They didn't look like they would come from the Dollar Tree. So I separated each of the floral stems and using my Husky nipping tools, I cut them down to the size that I wanted them to be. I did end up using two bundles of flowers for this project. And to give it more of a farmhouse feel, I wrapped the stems with some jute twine. And to keep my stems standing upright in my vase, I took a pool noodle and then cut it down so that it would fit into my vase. And then all I had to do was put in the pretty little flowers. And they're standing up just fine in the center. 
but you can still see down into the center. So I took a little bit of Spanish moss and I pushed that down into my planter. That way you won't see that pool noodle. And here is my adorable little farmhouse planter for spring. There's another rope basket that I made. I think these are so pretty and they would be a perfect addition for your farmhouse spring decor. Now for this project, what I'm gonna be doing is making terracotta planters using these round boxes from the Dollar Tree. I did go ahead and paint them. You've seen me paint a hundred times. You don't need to see me paint them. So I painted the main section white with chalk paint. Then I used terracotta on the bottom, which is the lid. So the lid would have been on the top, but now it's going to be the bottom to make this look like a really fancy planter. I was having a difficult time making the lid fit onto the bottom of the round box. Round box? How can a box be round? But this one's round. And I tried the pool noodle, but that wasn't really working very well. So I did take some thin slices of floral foam and put that into the bottom of the lid. And when I saw that would work, I secured it in place with some hot glue. The floral foam is nice because you can kind of smoosh it down and it worked perfect for this project. So now these round Dollar Tree containers actually look like really nice planters. And using some more of that floral foam, I secured a big chunk into the center of the planters before putting my greenery in. And these are the planters all completed with the flowers. I think they look so nice. They definitely don't look like they came from the Dollar Tree and they look like fancy planters. So for this planner, I'm gonna be using these signs that I got at the Dollar Tree along with these wood squares. Now these signs, I got them at Christmas time and I really love the raised edge. So first I'm going to remove the hanger on the back because I won't be needing those. And then I took one of the wood pieces and I put a little bit of the Dollar Tree wood glue on it along with some hot glue for that instant stick and I secured it on one side of the sign. Then I repeated the process on the other side of one of the signs. And once both sides were glued on, then I took the other Christmas sign and I secured it to the other side of my planter. So the Christmas signs are going to be the front and the back of the planter. and using that hot glue really helps to give that instant stick while the wood glue sets up. Now once I had the basic shape of my planter, I needed to put on a bottom. So I took two more of the wood squares and I attached them to the bottom of the planter. Then I use some painter's caulk to fill in all of the sides. So anywhere there are seams, that's what I used the caulking for. This way it will make the planter look cohesive and like it's one solid piece and not mismatched pieces that I pieced together. Next, I took some white chalk paint and I painted the entire planter. Now the chalk paint is going to be acting like a primer for the real paint job that's gonna be coming up.
Now once that paint had dried, I did take some craft sticks and I filled in that empty gap that's on the bottom of the planter. Now if you don't have the craft sticks, this step really isn't necessary unless you're going to be using this planter differently than I'm using it. But I did want to have a almost solid bottom, so that was why I decided to use the craft sticks. And once the glue had dried, now it's time to start the first coat of the paint for the planter. And I'm going to be using the burnt umber paint. I'm using the darker brown paint because I'm going to be using folk art crackle coat over top of it. So I painted every part of the planter with the burnt umber paint. And it did take two coats of the burnt umber to get a solid finish on the planter. Next, I took the Folk Art Crackle Paint and I painted that over the planter itself. Now, if you've never used the Crackle Coat, if you use a thicker coat, that's going to give you a lot of crackles. And if you use a thinner coat, it will give you bigger, larger crackles. And for this project, I want it to look aged and weathered, but not a ton of crackling. So I guess I would be using a medium coat of the Crackle Coat. Now once the crackle coat had dried, then I came back with my top coat. So this is the color that's going to be the main color of the planter, and then the crackling is going to be the burnt umber. The one thing to keep in mind, if you are doing the crackle coat painting technique, you need to keep your paint strokes going all in the same direction. Now that was a little bit challenging with all of the different pieces and sides that I had with this planter, but to me the end result would be worth it. And after it's dried, this is how the crackle coat turns out. Isn't that awesome? I just love this technique. And here is the finished planter. I think it looks so pretty and it doesn't look like it was pieced together. I really like the crackle coat and I really like the flowers that I found to put inside of the planter. It definitely gives a spring vibe. So for this project, I'm going to be using this Dollar Tree planter, but I'm only going to be using the base. Just the base. And I have a collection of Dollar Tree rings that I just keep collecting and I don't know what I wanna use them for until today. So I found one of the rings that will fit that base of the planter perfectly. And then I'm taking two of the larger rings and those are going to be the sides of the planter. So I started by attaching the two larger rings together with a little bit of hot glue. Next I took some jute twine and wrapped it around the top of the planter, so the two rings together. This is going to give it some strength so it's not going to come apart. And then I just removed the excess jute. And there's the top of my planter. Next, I took the smaller ring and I secured it in between the two larger rings. And I'm using some craft glue and I will leave a link in the description box below. This stuff is wonderful to use with crafts. It's very strong and it dries clear. So I just took a little bit of that craft glue and I secured that smaller ring in between the two larger rings and then I set it off to dry. Now while that was drying, I took some of my homemade terracotta chalk paint and I painted the base a terracotta color. I really like the terracotta color and I think it will really stand out nicely against the frame of the planter.
And once I was dry, I did give it a coat of Mod Podge to seal that paint onto the plastic planter. And it gives a nice shine too. Then I took some Dollar Tree rocks. These are just white rocks from the Dollar Tree and I put them into the planter. Next, I took some faux succulents and I just secured them in place into the rocks. And then I took some smaller ones and just filled in the blank spaces. And there's my little succulent garden. And all I have to do is put it into the planter itself. And just like that, my planter is done. And here is the finished project. I really like how this turned out. It is so cute. And if you wanted to make this a hanging planter, you could do that too, just by securing the hanger to the top center of the planter. Now I had these Christmas containers that I got a while ago and they're stuck together and I cannot get them apart. No matter how hard I try, they won't come apart. So they are gonna be my next planter. I took them outside and gave them a coat of Home Depot high gloss white paint. And I'm just really worried about the top one, not so much the bottom container. Then I brought it back inside and painted it with chalk paint. So the spray paint is basically acting like a primer for the plastic material. And then the chalk paint will be my finish on this project. Then once it was dry, I attached this rope and I believe I got this on Amazon. It was just a big roll of rope. And I just started at the bottom and worked my way around the containers. Now, if you're gonna be doing a project like this, I can tell you placing the rope gets easier the higher you go up on the container. And I am going to stop my rope where the two containers meet. And I really like that look. It's kind of a boho look. Next, I had this leafy swag. It didn't have any floral foam for this planter. So what I did was just cut pieces off of the swag and I secured them with hot glue inside and around the planter itself. Now, if you want to make a planter like this and you don't want to have the faux greenery like secured to the planter, just skip this step and you could use other faux plants or you could even use a real plant. Here is my finished planter. I really like that rope base. I think it looks really nice. The way I have this greenery in there, you really can't see the white part too much, but that's okay. I really like how this turned out. Oh, this is a fun one. So I have this foam clay that I got on Amazon. This stuff is really great. It was really affordable too for the amount of clay that I got. And it's very easy to work with. As you can see, I can roll it out with my hands, super simple, and it's very flexible. But I needed to have this foam clay be pretty thin. So I don't have a rolling pin, but I do have a large container of Mod Podge, which worked really well as a rolling pin for my project. So I just rolled the clay using the Mod Podge just to make it the thickness that I wanted it to be for my project. And once it was the size that I wanted, then I took a Dollar Tree planter just to make sure I had it sized up correctly. And I removed the excess on one side. So this is going to give it a flat edge, which will be the bottom of my planter. And I probably should have mentioned the foam clay, it is an air dry clay. So no baking or anything like that is needed. Once you get the clay in the shape that you want it to be, then you just leave it out to dry. And this clay will actually dry really quickly. So once I have my flat edge, I'm just going to roll the Dollar Tree vase around and keeping that bottom edge at the same level.
and I did have a little bit of excess and I found that a large Cricut scraper tool works great to give a nice clean edge when removing the excess clay. And I did try to camouflage that seam just a little bit as I worked that clay around the vase. And next I took this paintbrush because the end of it was the right size for my vase. So I want to just add some little depressions all throughout the foam. So every part of this foam is going to have these little circle depressions. And after it had dried, I did take it outside and I gave it a coat of the Home Depot high gloss white paint. And that is pretty much it. Here is my adorable little vase. I think it looks so nice. I, I really like how this turned out. It might be small, but I think it looks really nice. And I just took some faux flower stems from Walmart and put them inside. I like the pink with the white. For this one, I wanna make like an enameled bowl. So I have a bowl from the Dollar Tree and a candlestick. And they look like they are going to fit perfectly. So then I took some chalk paint and I painted each piece. So I painted the bowl first. Inside and out, the entire bowl got a coat of chalk paint. I did end up going back and doing a second coat after the first coat had dried. Next, I did the same thing on the candlestick. The entire candlestick is getting painted with the chalk paint and it also got two coats of paint. Now, once both pieces had dried, I took a little bit of black acrylic paint and I just started painting little patterns onto each piece. So the candlestick is what I started with first. I want it to look like the white is enamel that is worn off from a black underbase. And at first I was like, oh, I'm not sure if this is gonna turn out. And then I just reminded myself to trust the process and just continue on. If it didn't turn out how I wanted, I could always start over. But I think that looks pretty cool. And once all of the black paint had dried, I did take some E6000 and I put that around the top of the candle holder. Now, if you can see how easy it is for me to squeeze out this E6000 glue, it's because I have one of those locks on the end of the tube. Then I took the bowl and put it right in the center of the candle holder and set it to dry. And this is my enamel look planter. I think it looks so pretty. I didn't know what to put in it, so I used some faux rose heads and I think it looks so pretty. Dollar Tree has the most affordable wood shapes, like these little trays or boxes. I love these things. There's so many things that you can do with them. And of course, I'm going to be making a planter. So I used my favorite Dollar Tree wood glue and I put that all around the top of one of those little trays and secured the other one on top of it. Next, I have this wood veneer strip. This is so much fun to work with. And I cut out pieces so that it will be covering up those handles of the trays. And then I secured the veneer strips to my new planter. And I repeated the process on the front and the back and the remaining side of this planter using the wood veneer strips. I really like the raised edge that it gives and it does make it look a little more high end and not so Dollar Tree. Now, once I had that veneer attached, then I did want to have some feet for my planter. So I'm using some wood cubes from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to place one cube on each corner of the bottom of the planter. And once that was dry, I found this Folk Art white wax. So I like to use the antique wax a lot, but 
I found the white wax and I thought, hey, let's give this a try and see how this looks. So I brushed on the wax onto all surfaces of the planter. And once I was done painting, then I removed the excess wax and this is what it looks like. I think that looks pretty cool. Then I took some Dollar Tree rocks and I put that into the planter. This did take one whole bag of the Dollar Tree rocks. And I decided to keep this one simple and I'm just going to use one single succulent that's going to set in the center of the planter. Now these succulents did come from Dollar Tree, but you can find them on Amazon also if your Dollar Tree doesn't have any. And there's my succulent planner. I really like how this turned out. This is so cute, it's so simple, but I think it looks really nice and I think it would be a great addition to any type of decor. Now this is a plastic planter from the Dollar Tree and I really like the pattern that's on it, but I want to make this look like a cement planter. So I'm going to start by taking some wood beads and I'm going to attach four of them to the bottom of the planter. And this is actually a pretty good size planter for $1.25. You can get larger ones too, but for my project, this was the perfect size. Now to give it that cement look, I'm going to be using gray chalk paint and I'm also going to be using some salt wash. Salt wash is an additive that you can add to your paint to really give it some texture. And I like it to make it look like concrete. And you can see what it does to the chalk paint. It makes it look like frosting. Next, I made sure to have a good amount of the mixture on my paintbrush, and then I just started painting the planter. I don't wanna to go too thick though, because I do want to still be able to see that pattern underneath. And I also painted the bottom, including the wood beads, so that it looks like this is all one piece. And once my paint had dried, then I went back with some white acrylic paint and I just drew in some lines on the pattern that I could see. At first I wanted to fill in the entire pattern, but then I decided let's just keep it simple and just draw some lines using that paint to help make this look a little higher end. And there's my finished planter. I think it looks great. And here it is with a plant inside of it. Now the top edge did get a little bit crackly, but that's okay. I think this looks really nice and I think it looks great with a real plant inside too. Now for this next one, this is also from the Dollar Tree and this is a really good size planter. And I'm also gonna use some tissue paper also from the Dollar Tree. They've been having a lot of nice tissue paper that has patterns on it. And I really like this one. I think I'm gonna have to use that in an upcoming project. So first I cut down the tissue paper down to size so that it would fit onto my planter. I was more worried about making sure that it had a nice straight edge on one side because that's gonna go right around the top edge of this plastic planter from the Dollar Tree. So once I had the tissue paper cut out, then I used some Mod Podge and I put the Mod Podge all around the bottom half of the planter but it's actually more like the bottom three quarters of the planter because I want that lipped edge. I'm going to do something different with that. So the tissue paper is just going to be on this pattern part of the planter. And once the Mod Podge was on, then I just took my time and worked my way around the planter with the tissue paper. This tissue paper is actually very forgiving. So even if there's wrinkles, you can lift it up and move it a little bit to smooth everything down. And once I had the tissue paper around the planter, then I did cut away some of the excess material from the bottom. I don't wanna cut it too close though because I still want to have some of that tissue paper that I can fold over and secure onto the bottom of the planter. And then I use some Mod Podge to help keep all of that tissue paper in place. And once I had finished the bottom, then I came back and put a coat of Mod Podge on top of the tissue paper. Then I took some Dollar Tree burlap ribbon and I secured that all around that top open area on the planter. And when I got to the finished edge, then I folded over the burlap ribbon and then just secured it in place.
Now the ribbon doesn't fit perfectly around the planter, so I did take some jute twine and I just tied that in the center of the ribbon. I tried to get it as tight as I could and then just tied a square knot into it and removed the excess jute. Next, I did make a bow on its own and I hot glued that to the front where that square knot is. This will be the front of my planter. I really like that. And here is the finished planter. I love how this turned out. It's very farmhousey, and I did put in a real plant and I did put in a little bit of Spanish moss just to give it a finished look. So I'm gonna take this sign, let's stay home, and I'm going to turn this into a riser. If you watched my last video, you know I love making riser trays out of these signs. So when I find these signs at Dollar Tree, I always buy a few of them and just keep them in my stash for whenever I want. So after I removed that home embellishment, then I had these Dollar Tree stickers and I'm going to place these onto that frame. I'm just gonna go right in the center with the stickers and I placed those stickers on all four sides of this frame or my raised tray. And once I had all of the stickers in place, then I secured four little candle cups. These are so tiny. I secured those to the bottom of the tray. These are going to be the feet for my riser tray. I did use wood glue because I find that wood glue is a more permanent bond than hot glue. And once the feet had dried, then I used some black acrylic paint and I painted the entire riser. So I just went over the stickers with the acrylic paint. You do have to pounce it down a little bit to get in all of the nooks and crannies of the stickers, but even with that little bit of extra work, it is totally worth it in the end. And here is my adorable little riser tray. I think it looks so nice with those stickers a nice embellishment just to give it a little something extra. And then I found these glass jars at the Dollar Tree and this really isn't a DIY per se because I'm not gonna do anything to those glass jars, but I thought they would look so nice with these Gerber daisies. So taking a single stem, I put a little bit of hot glue onto the bottom of it and I'm doing this to secure the stem in place because I want it to stand up a little bit. So I did it on all three flowers and just placed one flower into each of those glass jars. And here's my riser tray with my pretty little flowers. This is so cute. I am so happy with how this turned out. I love the look of this. I think it's very springy and very pretty. And just like that, we are done. 25 different planters, and I don't think these planters look like they came from the Dollar Tree. What do you think? Like I said, Dollar Tree has so many awesome things that we can turn into anything we want. Sometimes it's fun to get a little creative and just see what you can come up with. I bet you'll surprise yourself and then you'll have some really nice decor pieces for your home. Well, I hope I've inspired you to get into your craft room and just make something. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be expensive. The best part about crafting is crafting.